Here at Vegan FGA, we always try and empower our team, our activists, our general audience to embrace their unique talents and bring bring them to their advocacy, you know, part of them into it. Um, would you say part of the Shack uh, success was uh, laying in that open collaboration and nature between the team, you know, allowing people just to pursue what resonated with them most? Yeah, for sure. I, I think, you know, I think giving people the space to do what they're good at, but also the space to fail and try new things is really important. I know you mentioned art school, but honestly, the art school did did shit for me. I didn't learn a single thing from it. It was the biggest waste of time. <clears throat> I'm not saying people shouldn't go to school. I'm just saying for me personally, it was not, it was a bit of a waste. Um, but that was the cool thing about grassroots activism is that like, well, I kind of had a, a, an idea of what I was doing but I want to learn more. And I had this opportunity to do it and, and learn new skills and, and better myself. And like, I still do that now. I don't know what the hell I'm doing when it comes to editing video, but I was like, looks like fun. I enjoy it. I'm going to start a YouTube channel predominantly just so I can teach myself how to edit and shoot and video and figure all that stuff out. And so with Shaq, it was like when you kind of embrace this non-hierarchical, um, form of, of campaigning and, um, um, very like, you know, open to any tactic, more or less, like that gives people an opportunity to, to spread their wings and try new things. And like, that, that was the cool thing about, about Shaq and, and other grassroots campaigns. None of us have any formal training. We're not, we didn't go to years of like school to figure out finances or how businesses work or how to organize a protest or any of that stuff. We just did it because we were felt passionately about it and we wanted to learn more and, and see what we could do. And, you know, they talk a little bit about this in the documentary. It's like this stuff's super hard to figure out. Like we didn't know what we're doing. I went to a two year art school that I finished in a year and a half. Like, I don't know how to sell and buy stocks on the, on the, on the stock market. Like, I don't know. Um, so it, it, it gives you the opportunity to figure out what you're good at and, and to practice and learn and, 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 and implement them. Um, and so, you know, with, with like Shaq, the, the organization, like there was Kevin who was really great, uh, strategist. He's super smart. Um, he was an incredible speaker. He can get you to do anything. Uh, Lauren was an, is amazing with the law. Um, she really had a grasp of how that worked and she also was a great strategist and organizer. And then I had a lot of like abilities to put together web pages and, and design things and make videos and figure all that stuff out. And I, I was decent at organizing and strategizing as well. So we kind of had all our bases covered, um, with that within Shaq, the organization, um, to pull together a campaign and, and figure out all the, the in between pieces. Um, and, uh, it just, it just worked. And I think that's when you see like really exciting things happen in, in, or in activism is when, we kind of recognize what we're good at and what we're bad at. We find people with complementary skill sets and we come together uh, to form the bigger picture and, and then we win. And that's, that's super cool. I'm into it. Uh, that's awesome. Like we, we like to refer to the, the vegan FTA team. We're, we're generally a bunch of uh, underqualified um, <laughs> misfits, misfits yeah. who are just bumbling uh, around, you know, and like, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. But that's where all the cool stuff happens, though. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, shit, I didn't know I could do this, but I figured it out. Like, now we can do it all the time. That's rad. Yeah. And even um, even stepping outside of activism for a second as well, I really encourage people to, you know, take those chances in their life in general. Because for me, I, I was the same. I taught myself how to do all the video editing or the filming and stuff like that. You know, and then I started a career from it being, once yeah. again, a, a, a underqualified misfit who knew nothing about it. But, you know, it was something that, was interesting. Uh, I had the opportunity, went for it, you know, and then that's what has led me to this point here. And for so many of us, I think we don't give ourselves the credit that I can do this, you know, I can actually make things happen. We, we lose the importance of, uh, of our individualness, you know, we may be one small drop in the ocean, but we have a big impact, especially if we are activists though. Um, totally. And yeah, you got to back yourself on some of this stuff. You are going to fall on your face, um, but hey, mm -hmm. Uh, the grass is nice and soft to, you know, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think that's super important, particularly in this world now of social media, where we look at, at our movement as to who's like <clears throat> the big names and the big, the most followers and the big likes and the most views and all that stuff. And I can't be that like, that's not me, but like, you don't need to be that. Like, like believe in yourself that you have cool stuff that you can do. You have great talents and you can use them in all aspects of your life to do important things. I'm the same way. Like 
I didn't, you know, I did this for 10 years or something, 10 years, maybe a little bit more, 14 years before I was like, oh, I could get a job doing this too. And now I work for, you know, it's a nonprofit and I do pressure campaigns and do all that same stuff, but I get paid for it as part of my job now. Like, I mean, why wouldn't you want to do all that stuff? But like you said, it's like, yeah, believe it, believe in yourself, shoot your shot and hopefully it works out. Sometimes it does. Oh, definitely, definitely couldn't agree more. And yeah, another another self taught writer here as well, you know. So, <laughs> and that's that's what we do, you know. So it's, yeah. it's it's great, and I think you know it helps so much as well when your passion drives you. And um, something that we've you know we strongly resonate with that we've heard you talk about in a previous interview as well is the importance of um, those behind the scenes activists. You know, we can't all be front men kind of thing. And while many may aspire to be the sort of kick ass animal liberating machines or the Un- unflappable public speakers for the animals, which I'm definitely <laughs> not. <unflappable. laughs> the reality is, you know, that not not everyone is as lucky as we are. You know, um, many of us do hold down the ordinary jobs and have skills rooted in less dramatic areas, such as organising documents um, and spending hours doing research. Some of us are not able to go out and um, and do these roles due to physical or yeah. mental health conditions. Um, indeed, since uh, Vegan FTA was founded, you know. Um, half of our core team has been made up of individuals like me who uh, suffer with chronic health conditions that make these yeah. more glamorized forms of advocacy pretty much impossible. You know, I'd love to be out there doing the frontline stuff, but, you know, sometimes we never know what our bodies are going to do on any given day. So having spent so much time entrenched in the shack offices doing the unseen tasks and, and day-to-day operations that allow those big wow moments to happen on the streets, what are some of the roles you feel we should be celebrating and giving more credit to among our activists? Um, all of them, you know, I feel like when I talk about Shaq, uh, you know, like I said, like, we didn't know what the hell we were doing, but like the things I, I would have loved to have had a tax accountant, like a lawyer, uh, people that could like, you know, tell us how the sec works and the security and exchange commission in the United States, people that went to school for finance, like. I, we didn't know any of this stuff. Like we literally called up the government and pretended we were a student and we're like, Hey, can you tell us how, like I would buy a share in this cut? Like what does a company need to, sh- to, to be on the stock exchange and, you know, t- lying your way through those conversations. It would have been much easier if we just had like someone that knew all that and was like, this is what needs to happen. And this is what you need to do to stop it. Um, there's so many important roles. I, I mean, going back to the story we told earlier about Oracle, Oracle uh, partners and the, um, the letter writing, it's like, I wrote letter writing off as stupid and a waste of time, but like, it was those grannies behind the scenes that no one, no one knows who they were. <clears throat> I, I couldn't tell you who any of them were now, but they were critically important in getting the third largest shareholder in the lab to, to sell something like 13 million shares of, of this company. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's easy to particularly again in a day of social media where you can be like, Oh, look at that picture of, of the person passing the puppy over the wall or chanting themselves to this and blah, 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 blah. Like, where's the picture of like someone typing away or on the computer or like someone like reading a book or like, you know, it's like all this stuff that like, isn't very glamorous, but God, you can't, you can't be successful without those people. Um, so in, in a way it's hard to glamorize that and maybe they, it it shouldn't be glamorized or none of it should be glamorized. But like, um, I just think that like, I get a lot of messages from people that are like, I want to be an activist, but I don't know where to start. And I'm always like, you just figure out what you're good at and figure out where you want to plug that into and see if they need you to plug it in. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't have to be yelling through a bullhorn. Maybe you're really good at writing. Maybe you're good at writing grants. Maybe you're good at fundraising. Maybe you're good at doing bake sales. Maybe you're good at designing things. Like everyone needs that stuff and wants that stuff as an organization. Find a, and, and with the internet, you can plug in anywhere in the world. You know, find something cool online that speaks to you and write them. And if you can't find anything that speaks to you or you want to start something locally, again, find those people with with uh, complementary skill sets of your own, and you, with three or four people, you can pull together a full full organization. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think comes uh, you know that whole thing. If we want to build a vegan world, well, we need to build a vegan world, and like our yeah. world isn't activism. Our world isn't just uh, what we're doing on the day to day. It's it's every element. You know, whoever made these curtains, whoever you know. And, Every yeah. part of it, everything in this world needs to yeah. be created by somebody. And so if you can do it ethically, morally, 
uh, environmentally friendly, hu- human friendly, everything, you know, then that is fantastic. Bring it, you know, yeah. and um, we'd, I'm that, sure we would we'll go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, when I think about, you know, I think about some of the, the people that really s- supported us in the biggest ways in the Shack campaign is because we knew we were under so much pressure and scrutiny that we would, one of the things that we, security rules that we had was that the house, which was our, also our office, was never to be empty. So there had to be someone in it 24 hours a day, which meant that, you know, usually a large majority of the time, the three or four people that lived in the house, we could never leave. And like, you might spend weeks never leaving the house without maybe going for a walk around the, the block or something when someone else was home. But like going out somewhere or anything is like, was impossible. You had to find someone that could come and sit at the house. And um, like, to me, that was like some of the most important things anyone could have done and what a boring job can you come sit in my empty house for an hour and be like yeah sure it's like who, who made your curtains you know how much how important those curtains are to the fta <laughs> office like like <laughs> those things are like super important and like uh you just i don't know i think people think like oh well i can't offer anything important like literally sitting in an empty house was probably one of the most important things so we could go to the grocery store and buy food or we could go to the park and go for a run or stretch our legs or just have a life that wasn't activism, you know, for an hour out of the five and a half years. Like those little things, I think, really, really make a big difference. Yeah. It's just it's way too easy to get caught up in that. Yeah. It, but social media is, what, is one of the main places and where this is going to be yeah. aired. Um, but, you know, <laughs> where you get caught up in, in the glamorization and that whole thing. Uh, well, the, the keeping up with the Kardashians type thing, you know, I've got to be this level of, you know, uh, public importance. But, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, sitting in the house is way more important than uh, being a Kardashian. So, you know, like maybe uh, if you're a Kardashian, maybe. you buy multiple houses. Uh, this is true. <laughs> yes, but who sits in those houses? I ask you that. You know? <laughs> and where do they get their curtains? Who makes yeah, them? Curtains. <laughs>